You may already be aware that I have a full set of videos on the subject of family law that is available on Gumroad, and if you're not aware of that then I'll leave a link in the description to this video. But one of the videos that I recorded for that course was on the subject of divorce and dissolution. And that video was recorded a few years ago, but the one of the things that I talked about was that there were proposals for changing the law in this particular area. And since I've recorded that video and since it's been published, the law has indeed changed in a fundamental way. So the point of this video today is to sort of update things and provide a refreshed look at the subject of divorce and dissolution. Now, this all came about because of the 2018 case of Owens and Owens that um, came up before the Supreme Court. And in that case, the woman essentially wanted to divorce her husband, but couldn't meet any of the facts that needed to be established for a divorce, traditionally under the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973. And these were things like um, adultery and separation. And even though she wanted to get a divorce, she couldn't prove any of those facts. And so the Supreme Court was very sorry, but they basically said, no, you can't actually have a divorce. And this rubbed people the wrong way, because if you don't want to be married to someone anymore, then surely you should just be allowed a divorce and be allowed to get on with the rest of your life. This was picked up by Theresa May's government, who eventually passed the Divorce, Dissolution and Separation Act 2020. And it only came into force in April 2022. So I'm just doing this video now. I'm recording it in May 2022. So the act has come into force. We haven't really had much case law on this area yet, but I wanted to give a bit of an update on divorce and dissolution. So that's what we're going to do now. Before we get started properly, there are a few general points that we can make. I think the first one to say is that the Divorce, Dissolution and Separation Act 2020 only amended the older act of the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973. So whenever you're answering a question in this area, um, the act that you're still going to be citing is the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973. So, for example, under Section 3, Subsection 1 of the Matrimonial Causes Act, there is an absolute bar to divorce in the first year of marriage. One of the other points that we talked about in the previous video before the reforms took place was that um, the actual process of actually getting a divorce was still pretty slow. But the hope is that that has now been transformed and is a lot quicker because of the My HMCTS, which is available online. HMCTS just stands for Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Service. Also under the new Act, couples can now make a joint application for divorce, which wasn't available before, but it could make things a little bit more simple and streamlined in terms of getting the application sorted and approved. So divorce itself is a two-stage process. The first is the conditional order, and then that's followed by the final order. Now, once the conditional order is granted, the applicant can then apply for a final order after six weeks. If the um, original applicant doesn't do this or doesn't follow through and go for the final order, then three months after that six-month period, the respondent is then also allowed to apply for a final order instead. So if there hasn't been an application for a final order within 12 months, the court may then request evidence to try and account for the delay. There's also another couple of points that come from case law as well, which I think are quite important. So the first is that if there's a procedural irregularity, that might re render the final order void. So in the case of Dennis and Dennis from 2000, it was the wife who had applied for the divorce. And then following that, she had then not applied for the final order. But in the meantime, her husband's solicitor actually applied for it. And so the wife became divorced without actually knowing about it. And that procedural irregularity um, made the final order void. Also, in certain circumstances, the application can actually be refused. So in the recent case of Thacker and Thacker, there was again a wife who was divorcing her husband, and the husband claimed to be worth less than £500,000 in total. However, the wife suspected that the husband was actually worth a lot more than that, and had a number of assets available offshore, which meant that he was essentially a billionaire. 
Now, obviously, the wife's um, uh, availability for a remedy would change dramatically if she was the ex-wife rather than the current wife of her husband. So in that particular circumstance, the application could actually be refused on those financial grounds. Now, you'll notice that both of those cases took place before the Act was passed in 2020 and certainly before it came into force in 2022. So it's not really clear yet how some of this old case law will operate under the new legislation. But I think things like this have a good chance of still standing up even under the new system. So under the Matrimonial Causes Act 1973, there is one single ground for divorce, and this is the irretrievable breakdown of marriage. Now, in the past, and in the past video, which you can look at if you're interested, it was necessary to establish one of five facts which would accompany this ground for divorce. And this might be things like adultery or separation or something else. However, now, because of the Divorce, Dissolution and Separation Act 2020, a simple statement that the marriage has irretrievably broken down must be treated as conclusive evidence by the court, in, and as per Section 1, Subsection 3. Again, it will be interesting to see how some of the case law um, defines this, especially with that sort of must wording, kind of uh, fettering the discretion of the court a little bit. But that's the wording that's used, and so we have this single ground for divorce, making things much more simple than under the old system. So what does divorce actually do? Once you've got that final order and both of the parties are completely divorced, what does that mean? Well, the parties can remarry. There are property and finance orders that can take effect. And in other videos on the family law course, we talk about like what those finance orders might look like. Um, there are also certain financial benefits that can accrue. Rights relating to the family home are lost, obviously, because no longer um, part of the same family. And duties in relation to children continue, but again, this is subject to orders by the court. And throughout the family law course, which I've got on Gumroad, we talk about how um, divorce can affect children as well. Wills um, may also be impacted as well, depending on how they're worded. So I've obviously talked about sort of uh, heterosexual relationships and um, marriages between um, same-sex couples as well. There are civil partnerships still, and so the dissolution of civil partnerships basically almost identically mirrors the provisions for divorce. So um, if you're worried about that and it's a civil partnership that comes up in, say, a problem question, don't worry about it. It essentially functions in exactly the same way. There are other forms of dissolution as well, so there is a decree of judicial separation which allows the parties to remain married but they do not live together and property and finance orders can also be made. It's essentially divorce in all but name and it's often used in the context of people who feel that divorce is against their religious beliefs but they do want to separate from their current partner. Also another one that is just certainly worth being aware of is the Presumption of Death Act 2013, which can obviously have an effect on um, marriages as well. And so there we have it with a new and updated introduction to divorce and dissolution. Certainly a lot shorter video than last time, and I think that's just because the process has become so much simpler. In the past, this sort of area might have been its own subject for a problem question where you were sort of looking at the behaviour of the parties and trying to identify if, say, for example, their behaviour would be considered unreasonable enough to merit a divorce. Whereas now, all you really need to be aware of is that if one of the parties wants a divorce, then they're able to get it. It's still an important area of the law to be um, familiar with if you're doing a family law course because it might come up in relation to another area as well, such as making a financial order after the parties have actually got a divorce and how it will impact on them. I think it could also come up as part of an essay question as well. These reforms are still quite new and so you might be asked, for example, do you agree with the reforms? Should it have been made much easier to get a divorce now? It's certainly a lot easier in terms of like the speed at which it's possible to get a divorce. But does this remove the possibility for a reconciliation between the parties? Obviously, much of the legislation in the past was around sort of thinking about the UK as a Christian country and the marriage as being, you know, part of uh, the Church of England or other religions. 
And now that's much uh, less the case. And we're seeing a lot of uh, civil partnerships now and people are less likely to get married in the church. So we're almost sort of seeing an interesting separation between the institution of marriage and the institution of religion in this country. So there's definitely a lot of uh, things to think about and some uh, questions there for academics to maybe answer in the coming years. Anyway, as I mentioned at the start of this video, I have, do have a full course on family law if you are studying that particular subject, so do check out the link in the description. In the meantime, uh, please leave a comment on this video if you have any questions or concerns. Leave a like and subscribe to catch up with more videos in the future. I'll speak to you soon, but for now, bye!